Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. Okay, so today I'm just going to show you, I'm going to, we're going to work through how you can sort out some totals in, in, in your data and, and more so when, uh, when you implement more advanced logic. Now, there's so many different situations, I can't obviously answer them all, but I just want to show you a technique that I think will help you try and work out how to solve it. Now, the problem is, the problem is, is that, and what I mean by totals is I mean the totals that we have down the bottom of, say, tables, or if we utilize cards. Now, these totals are going to obviously derive different, um, uh, different numbers to what are, are actually in the tables, and it's all because of the context. Now, the, diff the big difference with a total is that there basically is no context. There's no context on the result, or there's no filter on the result. So it's basically just doing everything without any filter in place. But sometimes you want to do something slightly different, where you actually want to uh, sum up a total based on re uh, the individual results that you are getting inside of tables um, based on their filters. Now I've got a perfect example of, of what I mean, and we'll work through it, and, and then I'm hoping that this will um, be relevant to examples that you may face, um, or you may have already have faced, or will face in the future, and hopefully you can um, you can work away and work through them and work it out. Now what I wanted to calculate here was I wanted to calculate, oh, I'll just change this around, um, no, actually I'll leave it as it. I wanted to calculate, um, so I've got my total sales here, right? So this is very simple, total sales, let's have a look at the formula. It, this is just a simple iterating function. I've showcased this many, many times. Uh, this is just calculating the total sales for um, everything, but it has been filtered by the month name, if you think about it. So it is being filtered for each different month, but not being filtered by year. So it is counting up every single year's results in January and February and March, etc. Now what I wanted to have a look at here was that um, I wanted to look at averages across year. So on average in January, how much do we sell regardless of um, uh, or, or over three years or four years or five years? Now the formula which I used for that is I used a relatively simple one. I can actually just make this look a little bit better. So what we're doing is we're using an um, iterating function, average x, and we are iterating through every single month and year in the current context and then calculating up the uh, total sales and then averaging it, averaging each individual one of those sales. Now if we think about um, what this is actually doing in say January, well um, obviously you can't see it in the data, but there's only three years in the data, 2015, 16 and 17. So what this is doing, this values is it's calculating January 15, January 16 and January 17 sales and then, so there's three uh, calculating up total sales three times, and then it's averaging those three numbers, and that's why we get that, uh, this particular result here, 956,000. Then when we get to the total though, what happens is it, it's actually doing, it's, it's, it is working the exact same logic, right? It's, 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 it's working out the average of every single month and year. Um, and so instead of doing three, well, it's actually doing three times 12. Um, so it's going through 36 months and then it's averaging those and that's the total that we're getting there. But what if we actually wanted to calculate uh, the total of all of these averages to I guess extrapolate out say an average year, an average yearly result? Well unfortunately this formula is not going to do it for us and we have to um, get in a, a little bit uh, of more logic inside of it to actually sort um, or to get the total that we want. So I'm going to show you what I actually did to actually do this. Now I'm not going to write it out because we're just going to talk through it. And it's not too far removed from what we did, it was just we added some or we overlaid some additional logic and that's that's the key technique that I want you to go away with is if you find this, this is this is the this is I guess the the pattern um, that, that will help you solve it. You might need to put different logic, but you you need to utilize something like this. Now, this moving average, so we we're calling this monthly averages. Now You'll, just as of note, it is actually the same result here, right? It is exactly the same result as a monthly average. So we know we're right there. It's just the total is different. Now, why is the total different? Well, let's have a look at monthly average. This is exactly the same formula um, as, as the last one, no different. But we've got average total here. And so let's have a look at this. This is a table function. So I've put a table function into a variable. And I've gone summarize dates, date, date month, and the monthly average um, equals um, so so this is this this if you think about what this table is going to look like in the background is it's going to list every single month name and it's going to work out the monthly average so it, it is basically going to create this table so January and this 
um, in these numbers here, it's going to create that virtually. Okay, so um, and by doing that, that's going to enable us to actually then uh, create some additional logic to, to calculate the total. Now, here's 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 the pattern. What you need to do is you need to use if has one value. So if has one value is going to say is it going to evaluate to true if it is actually filtered by one of these. So if it has one value, right? And so if month and depending on what um, what uh, what column we put in there, well we've put in month name. So we're going if month name has one value, so it does here January, February, March, etc. Will then equal to that result. So equal to the 956, 959, which is which is exactly right. So we don't need to change anything there. But if it doesn't, so if it is a total, then we need to go and do some different logic. And that logic that we're doing is we are going to iterate through this table function that we created. So the summarize, month name, etc. So, so so think about this table with the month name and the monthly averages. Think about that, but think about it in a virtual sense. We're going to iterate through that, and then we're going to count up. We are going to uh, count up because we're, we're in a sum x here. We're going to count up this monthly average column. And that's what we can do here. And this is really powerful in itself because think about this. We're not even referencing a measure here. We're referencing a virtual column inside of a virtual table. Amazing stuff, right? Amazing stuff, right? And so by doing that and wrapping that inside of some X, that's how we can actually get the total of, of all of these particular results. And then you can use that in a card and then you could call this, say, um, year, yearly average or, 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 or something like that. Okay, so pretty powerful stuff, right? This is, we actually covered a lot, a, a, a lot of just individual techniques in this in this one um, in this one video. So I'm I'm pretty happy about that. Okay, so um, just to round off, you can download this resource um, through Enterprise DNA TV Resources. Um, certainly check that out. Um, link is in the description. Uh, and uh, if you like the content, throw us a like. I really really appreciate it. Um, you know, I'm putting up a lot of lot of content. So so also don't forget to, to uh, subscribe if you want to learn a lot more about um, uh, about Power BI and many different techniques to utilize uh, in Power BI. Okay, all the best with this one. Hopefully that helps you uh, work out your totals uh, in the future. Cheers.